Now we're rolling. Mm -hmm. oh. Welcome back to Poor Man Mods, guys. Uh, today we're going to show you how to install a intercooler sprayer. Uh, Freddie went ahead and picked up a sprayer, well, a washer pump from Advance Autos for ten bucks. I think this universal fit, um, and he's already had it mounted here. But what we're going to show you how to do is just wire it in and then show you what it does performance-wise. Uh, he's already had the liberty of taking time to run his hose down to the intercooler, and I think you punched holes in the hose itself, right? No, it's hooked up to washer nozzles. Is that what it's hooked up to? Mm-hmm. There you go. So you got washer nozzles down there. But yeah, we're going to run a hot wire from inside the car. That's going to be controlled by ignition, but then you're also going to have the ability to switch it on and switch it off if you forget to turn it off with the, with the switch. So we're going to wire it in through there, run it out here, make it hot, and then we'll show you what it does. So we'll, uh, we'll show you the step by step. Um, the things you'll need to do this would be obviously some, uh, I think this is a 16 gauge wire. That's, that's heavy, heavy enough to handle current. That's 12 volt power. And of course, you'll need cutters and strippers and crimpers. There's my strippers. Always need strippers. You, you always need strippers. Strippers are key. And I have lineman pliers to cut wire. So that's this this stuff that you'll need. You'll need butt connectors, um, electrical tape, maybe zip ties to hold the wire in place. But other than that, I mean, everything else is pretty much good to go. So let's get her wired up. Whenever you're working with anything electrical with your car, disconnect the battery. It'll save you a lot of trouble, trust me. Why, what happens if you don't, Freddy? Don't wanna talk about it, but just make sure you do it. <laughs> See, what he's neglecting to tell you is we had tried to do this previously, and one was misinformed that the hot wire was still connected to the battery, and we switched, we wired the switch in, and sparks flew, and we ended up blowing a fuse. And his car didn't start for two days, so we, we, we learned the hard way. But um, what he's doing here is, in order to, to do what we're, we're going to try to achieve today, make it look clean, he's taking off the wheel, and then we're going to run the, the wire back in through the fender well. Right here. So we're going to take that little piece, piece off and run it through the firewall that way. Uh, same place I ran all the other stuff for the um, turbo gauges. Well, the gauges for the turbo. It's just a really clean, clean place to run wires. So that's what we're going to do. Dan, what in God's name are you doing in, under my dash? <laughs> oh, God. I'm making a palm of pain. Seriously, what are you doing? Oh, seriously? Seriously, what are you... What? 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 You, what are you messing up? What? what? Well, oh, I have here in my hands the key to all merit creation. Really? Yeah, I have a hole for a switch, and then I have a way to make things. Work. Well, I wire things in today. I get all crazy and wire things in today. All I have to do is unhook that OBD2 and that thing comes out. Hey, show them the, show them the uh, 240 with the spec wheels on it. Okay. You guys haven't seen this before. What do you think of that? Kind of looks like that one over there. <laughs> Only red. And it runs. Yeah. And that runs great, guys. Compared to that SR over there, that doesn't do a dang thing. No, in good time, I guess. At one point it ran. So, here's where we're at. Here's where I've ran the pillar, pillar cluster here, down the A pillar of the door. Uh, wires came in, underside of the dash, right around this area. It's a little tight fit, but here's the, if you can see my finger, all these wires here run up to the, to the gauges and they run out of a hole in the firewall there. So what we're going to do here is find the wires to go to the ignition here, which should be around this area. And then we're going to wire into there so that way when the key comes on, it supplies power to the switch. When the key goes off, it cuts power to the switch. And then we're going to run it right out. 
So this uh, this should be a fairly simple install, and uh, we'll get it rolling here. So Dan is inside the car, and he ran the wire up through this grommet. Now I'm just pulling it out to make it longer, so we can run it to the switch. All right, keep going a little more, and stop there. Now I'm just going to run the wire to the switch and try to keep it at least semi-hidden. Alrighty guys, here's what we got. Um, this is going to be the main power source, uh, so I've already tied into that. should come on and come off with the um, ignition. This is our ground. It grounds right to the body. And then this is the hot leg that goes out to the washer pump when you switch the switch on. So uh, with everything there, this should um, be a very simple install. We're coming right down to it. So I just wanted to show you what we had. Alrighty guys. We finished up wiring inside the car. Here's the new wire here. And it runs all the way over by the throttle body. Underneath the intake plenum, or behind the intake plenum. Over on the right side of the car. Right here. To our universal washer pump, which is right there. Our hose feeds to the intercooler. Right here. And then the other tube, which is what is supplied through the washer reservoir, pulls fluid from that, through there, down this tube, down to there, Mike, go ahead, and there we go. You have an intercooler sprayer for around 35 bucks. second gear pull, uh, probably go through fourth gear, and we'll get a reading, and then we'll put the sprayer on and see if intake temperature changes and if gallons per hour changes. Say 115 here now. So 
drop in 15 degrees intake temperature, increasing gallons per hour. I can't give you an exact number of horsepower, but those two graphs, gallons per hour and uh, intake temperature, those tell you basically your horsepower. I mean, if you're decreasing intake temperature, you're making more power. Increase gallons per hour, you're making more power. So for 30 bucks, we installed an intercooler sprayer, which these kits cost hundreds and hundreds of dollars. The pump was like 20, the switch was seven, the wire we had, and the washer nozzles were like 10 bucks. So I don't know, 30, 40 bucks on average for this sprayer, increasing horsepower, and we can prove that it increased power. So there you go. This is an awesome, an awesome You plan. spent $200 on a cooling mod. So I guess that concludes this episode of Poor Man Mods. See you guys next time. See ya.